Hey guys, welcome to another jam-packed astrology week as we are closing out the month of April. We are made eclipse season right now. Huge time of faded endings and beginnings. This very much being emphasized in the energy this week and especially to start our week. We have so much energy going on. So much also emphasizing this transitional period that we are in another week. Super emblematic of endings and beginnings this week today monday to start our week we have our once yearly sun north node alignment going on in the sky that means the sun will also be coming into exact opposition with the south node emphasis highlight the past and the future destiny and karma endings and beginnings we are also in our last day of this nine day aspect that's been going on with saturn in the south node of the moon in exact trying together in water signs also a sextile to the north node the nodes in our eclipse season very much the emphasis the focal point energetically today to start our week we also have an ongoing mars chiron square that is definitely a vibe we need to talk about this week as well the lesson overall this week you guys is to learn how to transmute some of these um, more negative emotions that may be sort of driving some of our desire to act or behave this week we got a lot to talk about let's get into our report of the day let's look at how this energy is coming together for us to start our week and what it might be looking like for us as we carry through this last week of the month of April 2023. Welcome back to my channel you guys. Today is Monday April 24th 2023. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the day where we are narrating the shift of the ages. We are on this channel looking you know through a microscope microcosm at the energy that is unfolding on a day-to-day -day basis in the context of this greater unfolding cosmic blueprint this conscious evolutionary track that we are on right now in terms of this paradigm shift and our transition into the age of Aquarius. How are the aspects on a day-to-day -day basis playing a role in impacting and affecting that entire transitional process so we're doing that we're always doing that we're doing that again today and if you stick with me till the end of the report we are also going to be looking at some tarot cards that came out I like to do a tarot reading to go along with the astrology just to tap the energy field from more than one modality so that we can get a more well-rounded overview of what's going on just sort of check it from a couple different uh, ways of tapping the field so we're gonna do that as well that'll be at the end we're starting with the astrology as I said in my intro you guys so much astrology this week lots of astrology we're in a very active astrology month this uh april 2023 2023 so far has been very very active in terms of the astrology very transitional year though so it would really need to be endings and beginnings are the entire real focal point right now we are coming through uh, a process of two consecutive double new moon and aries cycles that is very rare we are in eclipse season we are heading towards the next full moon which will also be a lunar eclipse that's going to be coming up and you know so we're building energetically towards that but being in eclipse season you know we have eclipse season because of the nodes of the moon whenever we have to the whenever we come to the season or the time of year when the new moons and the full moons are falling in a proximity of the north and the south nodes of the moon this is when we have our eclipse season each year and we are in that right now which means the sun is transiting very close to the nodes of the moon the nodes of the moon represent destiny and karma the past and the future where what we're we're very um learned in okay like what we're very skilled with what we're very comfortable with what we uh, are very attached to as well the south node has to do with the past and karma right but the north node this is like where we're being sort of like compulsively uncontrollably pulled towards because it has a lot to do with like our soul's growth okay and the north and the south node are not necessarily traditionally known as like the most positive and beneficial experiences in the way that the energy unfolds however they are very important very necessary and they are the life-changing ecliptic points okay so eclipses have a lot to do with major changes and you know destiny and fate and just like a more divinely aligned period of time that's because we are in karmic period of time as well that's because we're dealing with the nodes of the moon and that is what the nodes of the moon represent so therefore that is also what eclipses represent and we're in eclipse we season and there is a huge emphasis right now on those themes of endings and beginnings destiny and karma the past and the future divine timing divine alignment and also simultaneously detaching from you know 
things that we have been attached to for long periods of time so that we can go through this next phase of growth, which is being activated through the activation of the nodes and eclipse season and to start our week specifically, you know, this week, the sun is coming into the once yearly alignment with the north node of the moon and therefore the opposition to the south node of the moon as well. This happens once a year um, whenever the sun comes into alignment with that point and we are there right now. The nodes for a very long period of time have been at five degrees of Taurus and Scorpio. They're always in a polar opposition, of course. And so today we have our sun at five degrees of Taurus as well. So there is a sun north node alignment. This is indicating of course divine timing uh divinely aligned things happening of all types specifically in the sign of taurus there is likely to be an emphasis right now on resources and value and security and like partnerships and financial based stuff also like projects that we're working on um money financial like type of stuff generally and we'll talk much more about that but there is we're just in the window right now, you guys, where things are falling into place. And this is also a period of time I kind of want to say up front in this report where we don't want to be either, you know, working against the tides or forcing things. This is energy, I feel like, where we kind of need to like step back a little bit and just like let the cards fall, like let things fall into place. Um, you know, if an opportunity presents itself to us, you know, we definitely take it. I'm not saying, you know, be like avoidant or unresponsive to the things that are coming at us. I'm just saying, you know, if something doesn't seem to be working, this is not the time to really try to force it. And if things do seem to be coming to us that maybe we weren't expecting or weren't anticipating, this is the good, a good time to be adaptable, to go with the flow and to be very receptive to changes that seem to be ongoing now. I also feel like one of the major, major themes and kind of lessons for this week generally that we need to keep in mind, I feel like if we can sort of keep this in the back of our head throughout the course of the week and the things and the scenarios, the situations that are playing out, I feel like we'll have a much more su successful um ability to navigate through some of the stuff that might be coming at us, but there could be a need to really embrace our ability to transmute perhaps some of these more negative or painful or maybe even like a uh, irrational emotions or impulses to act this week into something that resonates more along the lines of just like having a sense of self-control or self-discipline or self-mastery or um like overcoming perhaps where we may have succumbed to a cycle of emotionally reacting in the past a mastery over our own instincts or urges or passions drives desires that are coming from a very like emotional place is going to benefit us this week in just the um the tests and the lessons that are coming through because I do feel like there are some sort of tests that maybe we're kind of experiencing this week to see how reactive we are or how able we are to maintain um like a sense of self-discipline in the face of maybe just some more chaotic or reckless or just passionate drives or emotions or urges that may be coming up in this energy and I'm saying that because we have because of this Mars Chiron square as well which we're going to talk more about but I feel like that is kind of a fundamental lesson and a fundamental karmic lesson also that we are working with this week now specifically what we're going to talk about today in this report of course we've got the moon north node conjunction happening in its exactness and I find it to be so ironic so perfectly orchestrated so synchronistic in the way that it's playing out that when we have in the midst of our eclipse season this year the yearly sun north node conjunction it is happening on the last day the very last day of this nine day window that i've been talking about that we've been in this nine day period of like completing a phase of karmic release that has been long standing and sort of keeping us attached to like a, a past framework of our own emotional reality that we've outgrown at this point in time because you know we're being pulled in this new direction by the north node in alignment with this you know this personal growth and this greater recognition of our own value and potential and this process of self-actualization that universe is calling us towards right now as we are going through this transition into the age of aquarius these themes that i always talk about but 
the sun is coming into the alignment with the north node, the opposition to the south node on the very last day before Saturn moves out of exact alignment with the south node. So Saturn and the south node have been in a trine exactly for the past nine days and therefore also Saturn has been sextiling the north node. So Saturn also is the lord of karma, the lord of time, has a lot to do with the past and things that have been in place for very long periods of time. The south node is also very representative of these same things themes. We've got Saturn in the sign of Pisces. This is the breakdown on one hand of these frameworks from the past that had sort of been holding up our own reality based on our emotional understanding of things in a lot of ways and our beliefs and stuff like that. And then we're talking about the south node in the sign of Scorpio. This is a need to release ourselves from, to detach ourselves from anything that has been stealing our power or anything that we've been attached to out of a lack of recognition, okay, of the lesson that universe is trying to teach us now, which is um, the rediscovery of that value, of that purpose, of that potential within us so that we can, you know, really go through this process of self-actualization and activate destiny as, again, we are being compulsively pulled towards this age of Aquarius energy. So this is really uh, very, 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 very much bringing to the end. And even with the Mars Chiron dynamic as well, that is also helping us to like in its higher octaves, overcome and conquer our lower nature, sort of like break ourselves out of any self-sabotaging patterns or habits or loops or situations that arise from an inability to be like sort of in mastery over our own emotional energy. We're talking about Mars in the sign of cancer, Mars in the sign of the the home and the mother and the emotional energy. And so this is probably bringing up all types of themes as well. And we're going to talk about that also. So, you know, uh, highly energized highlights on these faded endings, these faded beginnings, the past and the future, destiny and karma. We could be having some very, very karmic experiences going on right now. There could be some, like I've been saying, some very seemingly divinely timed or divinely aligned or oriented things sort of playing out coming into fruition and another thing that is interesting just about the chart specifically today for Monday we have four planets in four consecutive signs in a row that are all like at either 15 or 16 degrees we have chiron and aries at 16 degrees we have um mercury and taurus at 15 degrees we have venus and gemini at 15 degrees and we have mars and cancer at 15 degrees and of course mars and chiron are the beginning and the end of this like quad of centered planets um, and they're in the square and then Mercury and Venus are in the mutual reception with each other in each other's signs. So I don't know, you know, I feel like this is sort of like kind of a significant sequence of planetary placements going on as well. And I feel like, you know, the themes that are represented by the square that is going on between Chiron and Mars in Cancer and Aries are going to be sort of what the Mercury Venus mutual reception Mercury retrograde energy is kind of focused on right now issues related to our relationship to our own worth or rethinking what we want in the context of personal healing somehow are also like our mind may be on these Taurus themes, right? Mercury in the sign of Taurus going retrograde while Venus ruling Taurus, ruling the position of Mercury is in the sign of Gemini being ruled by Mercury. So Venus, Mercury, mutual reception, Gemini, Taurus wedged in between or in this consecutive like parade with Chiron and Aries, Mars in Cancer, and of course, Mars ruling the position of Chiron as well. Our mind could be on our assets, on our resources, and in the context possibly of like past fears or past wounds or traumas or victimizations. This could be like um, us really like reconsidering, again, our worth, our value, our potential, what we can create, what we can build, our assets, how we wanna be living, what we value, what we prioritize, what we appreciate, who we wanna work with, like the like financial partnership, value, resource, asset, comfort, material, possessions, based dimensions of our lives 
thinking about it, reconsidering it, like things going back and forth or potentially even like opportunities for change and stuff like that. But it's likely to also be in the context of like where we've been wounded in the past or like childhood wounding or childhood complexes and how like our hurt feelings from the past have impacted our personal sense of self-worth and value and therefore the opportunities that are coming to us now or how we can heal our energy body somehow from the past in a way that promotes our ability to, you know, attract better, receive better, um, have a better relationship to ourselves. Like, this type of thing and then of course in the greater overall context of this divinely timed moment of this karmic release it really is like kind of I feel like the energy this week boiling down to and you know we are coming to the culmination point the end point of this nine day karmic release karmic reckoning window that you know encapsulated also our eclipse that we just had the second new moon in Aries huge times of endings and beginnings I feel like, yeah, this whole week is really trying to help us heal from or gain a greater awareness of so that we can begin to heal from or resolve some long-standing wounds to our emotional body from the past that have kept us detached from or not being able to see or receive or accept embracing a better relationship with our own selves, with our own worth, with our own value, and also Saturn in the sign of Pisces, the higher octaves of this energy is anything is possible. This is there, 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 there's nothing off limits. This is, um, you know, if you can believe it, you can create it and manifest it and form it when we have Saturn in the sign of Pisces and we're operating from the higher octaves of this energy. So this is trying to break us out of our previous paradigms that maybe had diminished us or kept us trapped or kept us from perceiving our true value and our true potential. And like relating to ourselves in a way where we feel worthy of actually being able to receive that which we're truly capable of. So massive overhaul is going on right now. And don't forget also on top of it, Mercury did go retrograde and is still in a conjunction to Uranus. This is that great awakening energy. This is that conscious awakening. This is that those aha moments and, you know, coming across a piece of information, you know, be very, especially when you're like online scrolling and stuff, you know, through YouTube or, you know, I'm saying this specifically internet because we're talking about Uranus and this having a lot to do with, um, like air based communication and information when we're talking about Mercury and Uranus together epiphanies solutions that like aha moment based on just like a sudden understanding that comes through from hearing something seeing something just like uh things clicking somehow something being said in a certain way reading something in a certain way that really shifts and changes our perspective in a way that opens us up to this process of growth that is coming now that i keep you know going on and on about as we are again being pulled towards our self-actualization activating destiny you know living the true purpose in alignment with the divine vision that it, for which you know we came to this experience at this point in time universe wants us there if we are working against that process this is where we are likely to really come into contact with some of these like instant karma reactions to things especially also if these are lessons that we should have learned by this point in time so you know again like i do feel like this is a week where there are karmic lessons that are very much being presented especially as we're starting this week and it is our job to be transmuting and not responding emotionally to triggers perhaps in the way that we have in the past this is a week to keep our cool in the midst of some things that really may be provoking us and then being able to see our own growth as a result of our follow-through on that process okay so a week and a day divine alignment things are being reconfigured for us mercury retrograde right now in the a mutual reception to venus in the context of this nodal energy that we have going on in a better way that is in alignment with our soul's higher growth growth sorry frequency based changes going on as a result of this process as well remember this transition to the age of aquarius first and foremost this is like a frequency based transition but the way that the frequencies are altering like our own synapses and the way that we are therefore responding and acting and conducting ourselves in this energy like that is a, you know how it happens as well we are changing individually as a result of how we're reacting to the changes in the frequencies that are coming at this point in time as the universe the earth 
us, our minds, our bodies, everything evolves as above, so below at this point in time. So, you know, this karmic release, okay, this breaking cycles as a consequence of these frequency based changes and also detaching emotionally and psychologically from past structures and beliefs and frameworks of reality that perhaps have are, are outdated and are no longer a reflection of the potential that is existing for us now to create with this is trying to bring us into alignment with the realization that anything is possible if we can believe it i do also feel like again this is a higher dimension of the higher octave of the saturn pisces energy we're being tested this week will we use our energy to master and conquer ourselves and our own emotions or to wound victimize destroy and sabotage the Chiron archetype the wounded healer teacher Chiron energy encapsulates all of these themes so to the extent that there is great healing overcoming mastering alchemizing transmuting taking place in this energy there is also wounding and victimization and the destruction of innocence that goes on in this energy as well because that is the like sort of the trigger that activates and sparks the healing process that leads to the sense of greater self-awareness and uh, learning how to alchemize and transmute, which is one of our lessons this week, right? So both of these octaves are going to play, be playing out and it's our sort of job or role to choose. Are we going to, you know, let this emotional energy sweep us away or are we going to maintain a handle over the tides that are sort of uh percolating and churning around within us so we've got that this chiron oriented you know themes of childhood wounding or inner child wounding and the challenge to heal likely something again that we are talking about that we are thinking about that is on our mind but because of this progression of planets and these four signs with these centralized planets probably also um in the context of value worth potential and the changes that are going on within our mind and within our heart right now of course the square right the 90 degree angle chiron and mars chiron being in the sign of mars mars being in the sign of cancer the home the family the mother there may be uh we may feel a bit attacked or victimized or like we need to defend our sense of self in some way like personally attacked perhaps with the Chiron Mars influence Chiron being in Aries but it also could very much relate to the family mother and women generally with the cancer themes and I do want to say you guys all of us mothers out there you know everybody's mother who embodies the mother archetype because of the nature of this energy we do really want to like do our best to be consciously aware and taking care to sort of have some extra patience throughout the course of this week especially with children especially with families this applies to uh, caretakers as well and anybody who is you know who fills that mother archetype role especially again with like children or just has a position of power over people okay we don't want to try to react too harshly we don't want to be hyper reactive based on these emotional urges or these emotional impulses or this this uh internal sense of triggering that could be going on within us this could be a very violent or abusive energy on one hand right like i said it's got tremendous opportunity and potential and power for healing old wounds but on the same sense like this energy is also the energy that has a tendency of triggering those wounds in the first place to initiate this ultimate process of healing and again especially in regards to women especially in regards to children especially in regards to like family dynamics and things going on behind closed doors so powerful powerful energy for breaking cycles of abuse but also you know we don't want to be on the the side of that equation that is causing the harm or causing the wounding um we want to use it to be personally empowered to heal and overcome old wounds within us and you know that's what this is like this energy it, it triggers and it brings up those old wounds and if we are projecting that outward and perpetuating those cycles that's where for one we're going to get the karmic backlash like saturn and pisces in the trine to the south node as well like that is not the universal lesson right now the universal lesson right now is to conquer this emotional energy within us and to transmute it into a state of self-mastery over our own selves okay 
So we want to be the instrument of healing and overcoming and conquering in this energy for, you know, or protecting or defending like that could be another very positive way that this energy can be used with the mars cancer dynamic really like fighting back against any type of um like harm that is going on in terms of children or women or family dynamic and stuff like that but those are the themes and i feel like that is the lesson presenting anger and depression could also be strong themes going on this week with this very raw vulnerable chiron energy and mars and cancer the whole time we have mars and cancer any anger turned inwards a lot of times this is depression and mars and cancer is energy anger uh, mars represent you know lord of the battlefield right and um it can be very internalized so it can definitely bring up some very strong themes of depression as well also wars battles conflicts fights all of that type of stuff within families in terms of families uh home homeland community that's just part of the way that this energy could perhaps be playing itself out so on another hand though you know there's a definitely like a huge financial component and dynamic to this energy we have present right now as well and i don't think it's super great for financial markets i would not sign deals or contracts uh in this energy right now especially if it's involving a lot of money value assets um we've got the square going on chiron rules wealth value assets worth currency stuff like that and we've also got the mercury venus mutual reception right now while mercury's going retrograde i just don't think this is the time that you again want to be initiating pushing or necessarily like taking it upon yourself to like assertively execute on these financial deals contracts agreements new partnerships and stuff like that unless this is the disclaimer here unless they are falling into your lap in this divine timing divine alignment you're not doing anything and it's just on your table like we don't want to not take advantage of that like we don't want to push away the opportunities that universe is presenting us with right now we want to be receptive to that we want to embrace that but what we don't want to do is be trying to force things to happen that are not organically falling into place and especially along the lines of any type of financial partnership deal negotiation because with the mercury retrograde energy venus ruling money partnership finances um in the mutual reception while mercury's retrograde in the sign of taurus right and then the chiron square as well i just personally would not recommend that right now but again if things are coming to you, if they are falling in your lap, if they feel right, you know, there, there's probably going to be an adjustment, but it is, we don't want, we want to go with the flow of universe right now. So we don't want to push things or force things, but we want to receive what is naturally coming to us. Not great deal making energy. That's how I feel about it. We do also, I need to say, have the moon transiting the very late degrees of the sign of Gemini to begin our day on Monday. We'll then move into the sign of Cancer. Mars is in the sign of Cancer, right? Forming the square to Chiron. So for the next couple of days to start this week, specifically also in the energy for Tuesday, I'm not going to put out a specific report for tomorrow, Tuesday, but I will tell you guys, tomorrow is the day where we're going to have the moon in Cancer. Of course, the moon rules Cancer. This is a very strong lunar emotional energy coming into the conjunction with Mars. This could be a very emotionally sensitive, touchy day tomorrow. We could feel, you know, under attack again. There could just be, um, people could be sort of just like sort of losing their temper and stuff like that. There could just be some very heated emotions going on, a lot of anger or a lot of depression. Tuesday specifically, this is the day where we are going to want to try to exercise that level of self-mastery and detachment, okay, from some of these emotions. This is, you know, a great way to do this is to try our best to stay in a sense of gratitude. And also, you know, the people that we're dealing with to remember that everything is working working for us. Everyone is working for us. Even if we are navigating and dealing with what we perceive and feel and experience to be more negative um, interactions with people, we've got to remember that on some level, especially in this divinely aligned energy right now, they are working there for our benefit or universe would not have put them in our experience at this point in time. So they're either, you know, teaching us a lesson or they're holding a place somehow, or they've got something 
some information to relate to us that is meant to activate something within us in some type of a way. So the best that we can do to not be a vessel for negative energy, hostility, anger, you know, the, the more successful we are going to navigate this energy and the less, uh, like challenging experiences. Okay. We are likely to draw to ourselves throughout the course of this week. So that's really what I have to say. It could be very emotional day, very emotional week. What is coming up now though is really in the process of being released and it has, it's, these are things that we've been needing to let go for long periods of time. The position of the sun and the earth today as well, where the nodes of the moon have been you guys for a very long period of time. I'm very familiar with these degrees. These are actually my own personal North node and South node. It has been a, uh, Rocky road over these past, uh, oh God, it feels like months and months. It's really just been like several weeks, but the nodes have been stationary for a very long period of time at five degrees of Taurus and Scorpio. Um, that Sabian symbol of five degrees of Taurus where the North node is, where the sun is today, that, that Sabian symbol is a widow at an open grave. There's another version of this Sabian symbol that is a youthful widow, fresh and soul cleansed from grief kneels at an open grave to receive the secrets of eternal life. So this saving symbol really has a lot to do with, again, this release, this rebirth, this transformation, and this receptiveness to like what is coming next, okay? And then the position of the south node, a massive rocky shore resists the pounding of the sea at five degrees of Scorpio, these turbulent emotions, this need to not cave in to what might be pulling at us, what might be pounding at us, what might be causing us, you know, maybe some more, some uh, difficulty on an emotional level. We need to not cave in. We need to be strong. We need to stand strong in the process of this release and rebirth situation that is underway right now. Transmuting painful emotions into conscious creation, the widow at the open grave, the massive rocky shore resists the pounding of the sea. Uh, we are being freed of the emotional burdens of the past so that we can go through this process of inner alchemization in alignment with activating our destiny, discovering our true purpose, and beginning to step into that reality that universe has waiting for us at this point in time. So, hey, that's what I have to say today, guys, for our energy for Monday, heading into Tuesday. Again, Tuesday, we have the Moon-Mars conjunction. This is definitely a spicy energy whenever we have Moon and Mars in a conjunction. This is always a more heated emotional energy, a little bit more primed for some fireworks, but especially in the sign of Cancer, just because this is we're so sensitive, right? We're so emotional. We're so uh, in alignment with like the feelings and the emotional side of everything when we've got the moon in the sign of cancer and with Mars there, bang, bang, bang. So it's our job to keep a handle on it to, and again, it's not that we are like just allowing ourselves to like internally stew and the pressure is building inside and we're just like not reacting. That's not really what I mean. I don't mean like suppressing the feelings. I mean, understanding what's going on, like having patience with ourselves and others and finding a way internally to not again, be a vessel for some of these more just like negative feelings that can be associated with the Mars cancer, Mars moon energy, you know, the, the anger and all of that reframing our mind, Mercury retrograde conjunct Uranus in a way that helps those like more negative emotions, not to be as much of a problem. So that's what I'm going to say today, you guys, in terms of our report, in terms of the way that the energy is coming out, playing out for us today. I'm having like such a hard time getting my words out today. Mercury retrograde. I can like feel it. <laughs> um, anyways, let's talk about the tarot for a quick minute. We had three cards coming out today. They're all to me. This to me is talking about, like I said, not making, I don't think we should make big commitments in this energy right now, be it emotional commitments, be it relationship commitments, be it financial commitments. We also got Venus in the sign of Gemini. Like this is a very non-committal energy. This is talking um, to me about 
And then on the back of the deck, we have the Queen of Wands in reverse, followed by the Empress in reverse. There is this potential for this distortion in the feminine energy field this week, you guys. Um, we don't want to be, again, we don't want to be acting. We don't want to be deciding. We don't want to be, like, giving of our emotions if we are coming from a place where our feminine energy is feeling, like, in any way, like, distorted or inverted, um, there could be honestly like a lot of toxic feminine energy that is making itself known in, in the field this week. And we don't want to take that as truth. Okay. There's a couple ways I feel like this message is coming together, but one of the ways is like, if we are encountering that more like, um, like I said, like toxic or inverted or distorted feminine energy that is coming through in any way, we don't want to, that's the illusion. All right. Like we don't want to attached to or embrace the projection of that energy internally like this is talking about these three cards right here are talking about like a sense of illusion or confusion or disorientation or like not really knowing what's going on or not knowing what we want or not knowing what to receive or you know the offers that are coming through like what's being presented to us um perhaps like leading to some type of disappointment okay this to me these three cards the seven of cups the page of cups and the five of cups coming out in that order is like um some type of distorted offer or some type of false emotional expression or some type of illusion in terms of feelings or emotions that are coming through that are leading to some type of disappointment and again this could be coming through queen of wands empress in reverse because of some type of distorted feminine energy an inability, you know, or just heart-based energy, right? This coming through, which is being very indicated by the moon, Mars, uh, and Cancer squaring Chiron and Aries. So there's that. And again, I do also feel like, like, don't allow yourself to be persuaded, okay, into doing something that you are intuitively, that you don't feel like intuitively is in your best interest. That's another thing, like being, um, being, like conned into something being persuaded into something being like emotionally manipulated into doing something um it could be working against your best interest so again i just don't feel like it's the week to be making um relationship commitments deals negotiations like any of that type of stuff i again if it's just happening and you can't help it i it is most likely part of something greater plan that is unfolding for your benefit somehow but uh i would just you know, if it's not something like that, this is probably not the week. Let's grab one more card now. Um, God, Spirit, Universe, just a piece of advice. Uh, synchronicity card. What do we need to know and keep in mind? It says forgive, which also, you know, this nodal energy and the, the south node Saturn, like this karmic release also has a lot to do with forgiveness as well. Forgiveness is also one of the primary tools to um, transmutation and alchemy and this Chiron energy. So forgiveness is something that we need to, again, this energy will also help us. I feel like to kind of maybe conquer some of these lower instincts or urges that may be coming through this week. Be not afraid for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Psalms 91. You are in the dark when you indulge in depression, feeling sorry for yourself, anger, or ill will. Mars, Moon, and Cancer, squaring Chiron, you guys. When you condemn yourself for others, these are pestilences of the darkness. Anger towards others reflects your emotionally charged state. I like literally swear I just, this is like everything I was just saying. You violate the law of harmony and it will bring you trouble. Forgive yourself and others and hail God in your midst to heal your anger. To heal your anger. These cards blow my mind. Pray. Thank you, God, for removing my anger. This is amazing. This is a perfect, this is absolutely perfect card, absolutely perfect energy. You are in the dark when you indulge in depression, feeling sorry for yourself, anger, or ill will. When you condemn yourself and others, these are pestilences of the darkness. Anger towards others reflects your emotionally charged state. You violate the law of harmony and it will bring you trouble. Forgive yourself and others and hail God in your midst to heal your anger. Pray thank you God for removing my anger. Our lesson this week is tran to transmute these negative, painful emotions into a sense of self-mastery and self-control in alignment with our higher selves, God, universe, great spirit, and the path of growth. 
that we are moving towards now. So that was beautiful. That's what I have to say for the energy today, you guys. Message from the stars, message from the cards. Hope you guys liked it. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, you guys. Share it with your friends if you feel like they would like this type of astrology content. Be into the, this type of thing as well. Um, leave me comments. Love your comments. Thank you guys so much for being here, for your feedback. I honestly really value knowing how things are playing out for you guys as this energy is unfolding because obviously like this is a very significant period of time and I expect the things that are really going on right now to be a reflection of that so I appreciate when you guys share your experiences of how things are playing out for you with me as well um, I have a Facebook page a Facebook group a website some other social media stuff in my description box below if you're interested in any of that and uh, come back with me. Like I said, I will be back on Wednesday, you guys. I'm going to do a video for Wednesday and Thursday. On Thursday, this is when we have the exact to the degree Mars Chiron square. So we're in this energy all week, you guys. I will be back to talk about it. Um, patience, forgiveness, and until next time, you guys, have a beautiful day, and I'll see you then. Bye.